Hello everybody, Conti here with another video. How to create a shadow effect behind basic shapes in DaVinci Resolve 16.2.7. Inside your edits window, go to effects library, underneath toolbox and effects, go to find fusion composition. Click and drag one of these effects to the start of your edits timeline. Right click on your new Fusion Composition clip and go to select Open in Fusion page. Inside your Nodes panel, hold Shift and press Space to open up the Select Tool window. In this particular tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate the shadow effect using the Ellipse tool. The technique that you will see in this video can also be applied to the Rectangle and Polygon tools also. Find the Ellipse tool by using the search box at the bottom of the Select Tool window. Select this tool and go to click on Add. Hold Shift and press Space again and go to insert a background node. This tool will help us colour in our shape. Click on the grey box next to Ellipse 1 and drag your mouse cursor to the blue Effect Mask arrow next to Background 1. To make a connection, deselect your nodes by clicking anywhere on the nodes grid, hold shift and press space again, and go to insert a merge node. In order to ensure that your shape is in front of your shadow effect, we need to connect background 1 to the green arrow next to merge 1, which represents the foreground. Connect the grey box of Merge 1 to the yellow arrow next to Media Out 1. Select and hold your mouse button down on the Ellipse 1 node and drag this to the Media Out 1 preview window towards the top of your screen. So that you can see a preview of your shape. With the Ellipse 1 node still selected, underneath Inspector and Controls, you can adjust the size of your particular shape. In this example, I'm going to make the circle smaller by adjusting the width and height to 0.3. To ensure that the shape remains opaque, I will not reduce the level or increase the soft edge, which will add transparency to this particular shape. And I will keep these variables with their default values. Now to create the shadow effect for your shape. With the Ellipse 1 node still selected, hold Ctrl and press C to copy. Use Command instead of Ctrl if you are a Mac user. Deselect your Ellipse 1 node and hold in Ctrl and press V to paste. Ensure that all nodes are deselected. Hold Shift and press Space and go to insert the Drop Shadow tool. Connect your duplicated shape node to the yellow source arrow next to drop shadow. Deselect your nodes once again. Hold shift and press space and go to insert a new background node. Connect drop shadow to this new background node which will make up the colour of your shadow. Since we want the shadow behind our original shape, the second background node should be connected to the yellow arrow of Merge 1. To select the colour of your shadow, select Background 2, underneath Inspector, and Colour, select the shade of your shadow from the colour option. For now, I will keep the shadow as black. Returning to the Edits window, I will drag the Fusion Composition clip up to Video Track 2. Underneath Effects Library again, under Toolbox, go to Generators and choose Solid Colour. Click and drag one of these generators to the video track below your original Fusion Composition, ensuring that both clips are parallel. Select your Solid Colour Edit, go to Inspector, and underneath Generator, double click on the colour box 
and ensure that the color that you have selected is different to your shadow color. In this case here, I will choose a light blue. Click OK. And your basic shape with a shadow should be visible on screen. To edit this content, right click back on your Fusion Composition clip and go to Open in Fusion page once again. I will change the color of my ellipse shape. Do this by selecting the first background node connected to your original shape node and go to adjust the color underneath Inspector. To modify the shadow, select the Drop Shadow 1 node underneath Inspector and Controls. To make the shadow stand out more, increase shadow strength. I will set this variable to 1.0. To change the position of your shadow, change drop angle. The drop angle in this example project will be 29.0. To make the shadow stretch further across your canvas, increase drop distance. I will set this to 0 0.05. The blur variable refers to the edge of your shadow. The higher the value for this particular variable, the greater the blur effect will be around the edge of your shadow. I'm going to reduce the value of mine slightly to 0 0.362 to make the shadow edge less soft. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.